Think if there was an emergency. Obviously, I don't want there to be an emergency. I want every plane ride to be smooth, amazing, and fantastic for everybody on board. But we live in an imperfect world, so of course things are going to occur that are not always going to be the best things. And if you're in a scenario where you need to get off of the plane ASAP and then you're getting out of your seat, you're getting your luggage, and you look down the aisle and you see, <gasps> I'm going to die. That's really the whole scenario here. And I know she thinks this is cute. I know she thinks this is like funny. I know she thinks that this is like, oh no, I'm being discriminated against because the seats, the aisle, oh no, I can't fit in anything. Your life is going to be permanently filled with uh, occasions like this. It's not just the plane. And by the way, these, uh, these aisles are very, very, very non-conservative. This is a very liberal aisle in the sense of like how much space you actually have. And her sitting here making this video as if this proves anything at all other than you need to lose weight ASAP. It's obvious to me that this woman, I, I believe she does content for the internet that 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 is, uh, you know, a little bit of the uh, vaginal, maybe a little bit of the uh, fetish play, a little bit of that. You know, hey, look, things happen. People, people do things that are not always the best and don't act like you haven't done stuff that's a little bit nasty. You know, I know you've been a nasty girl or a nasty boy. It's okay. But sometimes I think we go too far. Sometimes I think that as us human beings... We take advantage of things and we go too far and where we give an inch, some people take a mile and sometimes they do that for themselves and they think, oh, no, it's fine. Like nothing's going to happen. Sure. Nothing's happening to you right now. And I actually think that's probably untrue given the fact that this woman weighs, I think like around 600 pounds as of this video right here. So I know that she's having ankle pain. She literally cannot walk upstairs. I'm pretty sure I've seen videos of her waiting for elevators or like specially designed elevators that are specially made for people that are in wheelchairs that she has to, she has to ride those because she can't ride regular elevators. I don't know exactly what the case is on that one, but she's a very big woman, a very voluptuous woman. And I believe she made this video to show off to people that, you know, fat people are oppressed. Obviously fat people are super oppressed and you know who they're oppressing? Uh, you know, who's oppressing them? themselves. I mean, predominantly it's them. Uh, I guess you can look at the government or society in general as oppressing you. But then again, the only way you were even able to get that size is by abusing society. So, hey, you know what? I'm all for people making their own decisions. I think it's great. Awesome. Go ahead. Do what you want to do. If you want to beat off to this girl, go ahead, dude. I've beaten off to deplorable things as well. I've even at one point done some things that I probably shouldn't have done. Like I remember when I was like, 14 years old and I had absolutely no lotion and me beating my meat sounded like you scraping your nails against drywall. So I decided that I was going to go into the bathroom and find some conditioner and it looks the same. Don't do it. Just not. Never do it. Never do that. It's not, it's not the same. It hurts. Don't do that. But for somebody like this, um, I believe this is worse than beating your meat with conditioner, to be honest. You know, I really love, too, that her shoes are always so small. Um, there, I, I think she only wears Vans, and I'm pretty sure she does that because she knows that her feet look unusually small in comparison to the rest of her body. But then again, you don't really, a lot of people don't realize this, but you don't gain a lot of weight in your feet. But when you're this size, there is a substantial amount of foot capacity that is going to increase. It's really crazy. It's like whenever you see somebody that's really overweight and they start getting fat on their hands, I always think like you need to make a really big lifestyle change because that means that your body no longer has the need to put that weight in the optimal spot. So like your butt, boobs, back, you know, gut, things such and so forth. But now it's putting it into your hands. Why do you not think that's an issue is a crazy thing to me. Like when you start having those like, you know, when you wear a jacket and it's really puffy around the wrist area. You know what I'm talking about? And it's it's very like inflated because of all the whatever cotton or feathers or whatever you had in there. When your arm starts looking like that, that means you're dying like fast. And I know that you think it's hot or very attractive to be at that size. I mean, I'm sure there's somebody out there that likes it. But is that really your winning lottery ticket? Is that really what we're doing nowadays? Like sacrifice maybe 10 to 20 years of your life for the appeasements of another man's genitalia through the processes of monetary gain? I mean, sure, people have done worse for less money, but I just kind of think sometimes it doesn't matter. Everything's within context. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think about this down below. Uh, eh. 
You know, I get really tired of people just assuming that all fat people have diabetes. Cause yeah, not all fat people have diabetes. Some people are a little bit more prone to diabetes than others, but I would really think that a lot of these people that are very, very overweight should probably get checked up on it because a lot of these people, if not, if they are not diabetic, they're pre-diabetic. It's actually super easy to be diabetic, especially if you're eating like literally nonstop carbs all day long. Like you guys literally have this idea of just, I eat what I want whenever I want because hashtag freedom, baby. And that's great, Slay Queen Edges, but that's not always the best thing for your health. I had a friend who was a beautiful black man, one of the most beautiful men I've ever seen on the entire planet. He's shorter than me though, but he went to Wendy's. Like I remember he was going on this bulk period. He was like, I'm gonna put on so much size, David. I'm gonna look so good. A dirty bulk. So he went to Wendy's twice a day sometimes and he would get that shake. You know what I'm talking about? That slushy, that smoothie. And he would get that double Dave's, bro. That big double Dave's in his mouth with the fries on the side. And sometimes he would get a little something extra too. And he would go there twice a day and I remember after three months of doing that, when he went to his checkup, his doctor was like, all right, let's look at your, <gasps> oh my God, you're pre-diabetic. And he was, he was on the brink. And some people are a little bit more prone to it than others. Like when I went to go get my blood work, my doctor told me straight out that I was the farthest away from being a diabetic than he's ever saw, which is, <laughs> thanks, I know. <laughs> I mean, what can I say? I'm like amazing or whatever, but he wasn't. And he looked great, you would have never known. So when people eat like shit, and when people are already working off of really bad genetics, you know, contrary to popular beliefs, even though these fat people are literally existing three, four, five times, uh, you know, what they should be in terms of weight, their genetics still suck. It's just a testament to how durable the human body is. And they could be, some of these people just don't go to the doctors. It's actually really sad to say. And as a man, I think it's really essential to tell people to go to the doctors more. I know so many dudes that think it's homosexual to talk to their to their doctor about any of their problems. Some guys literally go months, if not years, with undiagnosed problems because they think that it's not cool or they think it's the gayest shit to go to the doctor and go, hey man, yeah, um, I have like this really big lump on the side of my leg and it's been there for like 10 years and it's growing. Uh, is there something I can do about that? You should probably go to the doctor for that. Just, you know, just saying. And uh, I think it's essential. But anyway. It's like one, you know, I get really tired of people just assuming that all fat people have diabetes. Because like one, it's unoriginal. And two, there are other serious medical conditions that some of us do have. High blood pressure, definitely. Oh man, I'm so glad that you're going to talk about this. High blood pressure. High cholesterol, def oh man, definitely high cholesterol. Joint pains, I mean, you, you're talking about actual pain here, dude? You know, diabetes is definitely painful. It's definitely a problem, but you're not gonna really see the problems up front. Now, when you wake up in the morning, you put your foot to the floor and the floor pushes back, it's almost kind of like a critical hit. Uh, you know, especially if you weigh two, three, four, five hundred pounds, you put to that foot and you, you touch the floor, ah! Because it's so much weight that's being impacted onto the floor. A lot of people don't notice, dude, but when you push against something, it pushes back. So you're not just getting the downward pressure, you're getting the upward, you're getting the sideways, you're getting the outward, you're getting all of it, and it's hitting you all at once. And if you weigh two, three, four, 500 pounds, that shit is thousands of pounds potentially on the lower extremities of your body, your ankles, your knees. It's going to hurt you hard. And maybe you're into getting hurt hard, but I'm not. And most people are not, especially in this particular way. But go off, Queen. Okay. Um, like, I I actually have a serious uh, medical condition that I don't really talk about with you guys. Um, stupidity, probably. It's probably stupidity. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's called hot as fuck-itis. True. Uh, pfft, I mean, I, what else are you going to expect from that? Hot as fuck-itis? I got some itis too. I got some big meat itis. I don't know what I'm gonna do about it. Honestly speaking, it's become a, a big issue. I have to spend so much money on moisturizers, rug burn all the time. And I feel like a lot of people think that having a big meat is beautiful. Listen, when you're dating a girl and she goes, David, send me a dick pic. And you go, I don't have a panorama. I don't have a picture that, I don't have a device that can take a panorama. I'm sorry. If you want to see what it looks like, can you just real quick go on Google and type in the universe? Anyway, I'm not bragging or anything like that, but it's a problem. It's a real big problem. Stupidity is actually the real medical condition here. This woman is uh, making light about it. Sure, you can go out and make light about it, but that shit's going to catch up to you, bro. I, you know, I, I'm sick of these people just sitting there going like, oh, come on. My doctor told me that I'm going to like have a stroke at any moment. He's actually surprised that I've managed to walk in here. Stop it. Come on. What are you talking about, dude? 
Come on, dude. Go get, go drink like iced tea or something, man. Take a break, dude. What are you talking about? A stroke? <laughs> no. The only stroke I'm doing is that stroke I'm gonna go when I get when I get home. You know what I'm talking about, dude? When I look up all those bad pornographies of that really, really obese woman, Bo Berry. Oh, it's gonna be good. That's the only stroking I'm talking about. Anyway. Um, symptoms include having huge titties. Well, 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 I'm sick of it. I'm just gonna say it. I'm sick of it, dude. Just because you're obese and you're claiming, oh man, I'm just so hot because my you know, my my front boob genitalia is just so attractive and it's so voluptuous and large, that uh, doesn't matter to me and it doesn't matter to most people. If you're fat AF, if you're big and you're telling me, oh, but I just have such a big butt cheek and I have such a great, amazing bust, I'm looking at that a little sideways because I think that that doesn't matter. Within the context of everything, if you were... 150 pounds and you had those H boobs, then I would go, wow, that is quite anomalistic. That is actually quite impressive. Wow. Very delectable indeed. Mm, chef's kiss. But if you're 400 pounds and you're going, I have big boobs. Well, uh, I know. <laughs> I have some friends that are also around those same sizes that are men and they also have big boobs. Do you see me wanting to suckle and succotash in on their nipples? Nope. You know why? Because that is not impressive. I don't care that you're 300 pounds and you have big boobs. I have multiple friends that are around that same size that should realistically be going into the Victoria's Secret and getting that two for $60 special right now and try to hold up their bust. If you're a man and you're sitting there maintaining double, triple Ds, and 34 triple Ds. Dude, go to Victoria's Secret, get your bra size adjusted. One of them might be a little bit bigger than the other. That's okay. They'll work on it with you and get some bras. It, it just doesn't make sense to me how many people I see nowadays that are neglecting their boobs. Men need bras too. And I think that if you have the capacity for one, you should go about doing that thing. I am all for equality nowadays. And as I was saying before, if you're somebody that's 400 pounds and you're telling me that you got big boobs, hashtag I'm great, I don't think that's great. I just really don't think that's good. Uh, to me, that just kind of seems like a default. It would be an anomalistic thing if you didn't have any of that stuff be big because in that way, I'm looking at you kind of weird. And I've seen that before where somebody was very, very big and they had no butt cheeks at all. And I just look like, damn, that is tough. Like, can you imagine gaining all that weight and you're thinking, I'm going to gain this weight. I'm going to be so busty, beautiful, and and banging. But what it actually turns out is you, you look like, I don't even know, like a board that's been melted or something like that, like a cardboard box that's missing some stuff. It doesn't look good. Or kind of like a bag of milk, like almost kind of like a water balloon that had milk in it that you had left out into the sun that was like kind of arched over on the side of a platform a little bit. That's not good. I don't like it at all. Please stop letting my eyes touch your body. I don't like it. So uh, no, I don't care. And it's not really even a bragging point, to be honest. It's actually kind of crazy that you would even say this as a bragging point. It actually shows me where your head is at. It's really sad. Titus, um... <laughs> Symptoms include having that'd be like Shaq bragging that he has a big penis like I know a man that weighs seven You know if Shaq is seven foot whatever and he had even an average penis that would look weird So he has to have a big penis. I'm not surprised Huge titties. I mean honker melon mama jam whatever dude. And, the and you know what even I'm gonna keep it a buck with you guys uh, Boobs don't nobody cares about them anymore I'm, I know it sucks to say that because they had the leche and they should get a little bit more respect than I feel like a lot of people are giving them credit for nowadays But it really when was the last time you ever heard a girl rap about her big bust? I've never heard that shit There might be a one-off occasion of Megan the stallion little ways big titty little waist whatever But overall if you're rapping about something and you're a woman you're rapping about the severe Severe capacity of your domesticated butt cheeks. That's really what it is nowadays. So yes, I think that boobs are great. I think that uh, the front butt is great, uh, awesome, amazing, beautiful. But let's be honest here for a second. It's nobody cares about it. Uh, I care about it, maybe a little bit more than most. But if I'm being honest with you, I think butts are a little bit better. I know it's gross. I know it's gross. I, and the front butt doesn't even have a hole there. But still, uh, we know. In today's world, if you're rapping about something, if you want to be culturally, if you want to be culturally accepted, you talk about how beautiful, how glazed up, how absolutely thick your butt cheeks are. And even men, even men should be representing the big butt cheek gang as well. If you are a man and you're rocking with the inverted butt cheek, the Hank Hill, go to the gym. 
do some squats. Nobody thinks you're gay. Well, maybe a little bit. It depends on the machine. If you do the hip thrust machine, people might think a little bit suspect, but most people are not going to think like that. I mean, people are doing some weird exercises in the gym already, right? I mean, the other day I was at the gym and I saw a guy literally swinging two different sets of weights in different arms. Like he had a 20 pound and then he had a 50 pound and the other, he was just swinging them like this. And I looked at him, I was like this. And he also was doing decline bench. But you know what's really interesting about the decline bench is that he lifted the bench up from the bottom, right? And he put two dumbbells underneath the bench. So he lifted it up, which is very, by the way, unsafe. I don't know how many times I've seen people snap some shit up uh, doing some dumb shit like that. And he declined it. Right. But the funny thing is the bench actually goes down. I don't know if he knew that or maybe it wasn't an appropriate enough, uh, w like appropriate enough angle. And you know what? The other day I saw a video of a guy that was I couldn't even believe that people were talking about this as a good thing. But he was like, I don't know. He was like doing ab crunches, but he was doing it in the most knee compromising position ever. Like I was like watching this guy and I was like cringing the entire time because I was like, your knees are not supposed to have this much weight on them in this particular angle. You're going to snap some shit up. And maybe you're seeing that video on your screen right now. I can't believe the sheer stu and people in the comment section are going like, bro, what is bro training for? Oh my God. Is Goku coming to town? Is he going to fight Goku? No, he's going to have to fight the fucking chiropractor because his kneecaps are gonna pop off in the middle of the fucking gym workout and I've seen it I've seen multiple guys do that exercise before and they just give out and they there's done you don't you your knees are done for the rest of your life but for what for a, a TikTok video where people are gonna say that you're cool no it's not worth it to me I don't care okay I don't care bro you're not cool anyway a fantastic personality wow that's kind of subjective. I don't really know if we can just claim that we got good personalities. I, what if you ever met somebody that said they didn't have a good personality? It's not a flex. If somebody was like, uh, you know me, I have a great personality. I believe if I've heard somebody say that before, they've almost never had a great personality. So I'm going to have to call a little bit of cap on that one, dude. It's way too easy to say that. You know, it's just, it's, it's really a struggle being the funniest person in what? the Listen, dude, we're kind of going off the deep end here for a second, okay? You kind of lost me a little bit as the sexiest person alive or whatever you said, the hottest. And then you said the great personality and now the funniest. I mean, listen, dude, uh, um, did, have you ever looked in the mirror? I'm, I'm just saying, I don't know if any of this is true. Can we get some authentication? Is there a friend? Is there a couple friends that... No, we can't do friends. That would be, those friends are not going to be objective. We need to get some people off the street. You need to tell a few jokes. I need to have you in a communication setting. I don't know if we can just immediately say that you're a cool person. I'm just going to have to call a little bit of suspect on this. And the, by the way, the longer you go like this, the more I think that you're none of those things. The room with the fattest ass. All uh, everything I said about the boobs is equally true about the butt. The tight. So like, be kind. Unfortunately. Beautiful. That. Oops. Currently, where we are, a plus size fashion. Hold on. Right. Unfortunately, that's currently where we are, a plus size fashion. Nothing is ever what we want. It's what we have to settle for. We can't be told we have to settle. Yeah, but that's like everything in life. It's not just for a plus. I know that you guys want to be the main character. I get it. But that's like everything in life. Like, when was the last time you bought something and were like, "This is perfect. It's absolutely amazing. It, it, everything about this is just." amazing and even if you do think that wait two weeks and i guarantee you're going this sucks dick it's terrible it i this doesn't even work uh, i'm done like that's most people and so when you say in plus size fat by the way i don't know what you're wearing right now dude it literally looks like my curtains but whatever Everything that you get in life is going to be coming with some type of caveat or some type of I don't like. And that's all right because things are not supposed to be perfect. Like anything is not supposed to be perfect. Like you buy a car, it's going to have things that you don't like. You buy a Lego set, it's going to be things you don't like. There are going to be a lot of things that you don't like and that's all right. And it just kind of seems weird that you would preference this with being fat. Like why does everything have to revolve around you being fat, dude? It's just It just kind of screams really weird. Once you've been told we have to settle, and what's really interesting about I'm on my soapbox now. What's really interesting about that is you feel that with just the plus size experience as a whole, like you have to settle for relationships because well you're plus size you're not going to get the creme de la creme. Well, 
I just, I don't know what you mean by settling in a plus size relationship. What do you mean, dude? Like, it, it, I, I would have to know your expectations. I would have to know where you're going with that relationship. You can't just expect to be treated beautifully because you're fat or like, oh yeah. Dude, like, first of all, I don't think necessarily that the weight is going to prohibit you in a good amount. Like, obviously it's not going to be beneficial, but a lot of times I see that these people are actually flawed mentally speaking. These people think terribly and I could probably be around a plus size person or a fat person and think that they're great and awesome. Obviously, I wouldn't be attracted to them, but a lot of times these people, even though they're not good looking on the outside, they're also not good looking on the inside. The way they think and the way that they draw connections to stuff is always flawed in some particular type of way and everybody's going to have those issues, but it's even more amplified when these people think that they just deserve shit because bullshit. You have to settle, oh, well, I mean, airplane seats are just... And then, by the way, like, settling in a relationship could sometimes just literally be, oh, I wanted a guy with a master's degree, but I'm going to settle for a guy with a bachelor's. Have you ever heard somebody say that before? I remember I talked to a girl, and she said, if he doesn't drive a car that's made after 2020, it's basically me settling. And I'm just thinking, what are you... Are you dumb? Are you... What are you talking about right now, dude? You were born before that... Are you just like, am I settling for you? I, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Sometimes people just have these very weird standards and a lot of people think that it's settling when in reality it's really not settling dude like oh yeah i want to date a guy that doesn't date i want to date a guy that doesn't watch anime i guess i have to settle that's not settling dude what are you talking about dude you spend eight, like literally eight hours a day scrolling tiktok and your most used app is sheen like you do realize you're not a catch either dude that's that you just have to settle with that what do you mean settle? We well, the seats are not supposed to be massive. You do realize that. What do you want, like full-on recliners in the in the in the airport in the, in the in the airplane? You know that costs a lot of money. So the idea of settling here is kind of dumb because you're not settling. You're just getting what you paid for. You understand? Like that's what it is. Uh, if you need two seats, then buy two seats. I'm sorry that you're uncomfortable, but like everything in your life is gonna be uncomfortable. You're like four times bigger than what you should be. These things are within our own hands to control. These are yes, but there's a, okay. Yes, yeah. Oh, you're totally right. But just because something can be changed doesn't mean that it should change, right? Like just because you think that the airplane seat should be bigger, I don't even know how we would be able to change the identification of whether or not somebody wants to date you because you're fat. Like I don't even know how you would change that. But all right, sure, whatever you want to do, we'll just completely bypass that one. That's kind of fucking stupid. But. If you're trying to change the seats uh, or the capacity to which seats can hold on airplanes, yes, we can change those things. But then you're also introducing like a whole bunch of other downstream effects that are probably going to make that a lot worse. You know, like the price, like a lot of people, the reason why they're tolerant of the plane size of the seat is because they're not paying as much as they would have if the seat size was double or triple the size. You understand that, right? Like th there's going to be compromises to this shit. So when you say, why are we settling? Even when you don't settle, you're going to settle. Like when you make that seat bigger, you do realize you're going to have to pick up the price of that seat. So you're still settling for the price of the seat being extended anyway. It's just kind of dumb. Like, why are we talking about this shit? So I've not been, you know, pre um, predetermined. We can change how plus size fashion looks and feels and fits. We can change how big the fucking airplane seats are. We can change what fucking beauty standards we all adhere to. Well, I, what do you talk, like, what, how do you, how, how, can you tell us how we do that? Like, these are things that have been in place for potentially thousands of years. And I know it's like really cool to just say, like, we should just change the entire infrastructure landscape that we have in the United States and the rest of the world. And I don't even know how much money that would cost in terms of taxpayer, but it's okay, right? We'll just, I mean, live in fairy tale land, right? Obviously, building sizes, increase them. You know what? Forget about increasing the building sizes. That'd be too much money. Here's what we're going to do, actually. So if you ever watched Dr. Who, do you know the TARDIS, the TARDIS, the, the machine, the, the ship that Doctor Who uses? It's always bigger on the inside, right? There's more space on the inside than there is on the outside. Let's do that. Is it impossible? Yes, but it's okay. We're asking for impossibilities here. So we'll make the entire landscape of our a whole entire society always bigger on the inside. There's that, okay? Secondly, we're going to stop telling people that being fat is bad. Okay, obviously it is, but like I said, we're living in fairy tale land, guys. Stop, okay? Stop. You I know you think you're thinking David, we need to be in reality here. No, stop it, dude. We're not thinking about reality. That's not cool. Reality sucks. A lot of fat camel dicks. Stop it. 
So being fat, cool, cool. Uh, I know that you didn't want to date that really fat guy that had like nacho cheese on the top of his lip and looked like a grease stain, like a walking grease stain, and uh, probably couldn't, uh, had hormone levels that there were literally in China, like through the fucking earth. But you know what? Uh, forget about that. <laughs> Suck it up. You need to date that guy. He's hot. He's really hot. I mean, look at, uh, <clears throat> he's really hot. But uh, anyway, yeah, go ahead and date that guy. He's really good for you. And same thing with you guys. If you see a woman and she's huffing and puffing and she can't even stand up without going, <gasps> date her. She's beautiful. She is a lovely angel. Oh my God. Look how, look how, look how beautiful. Do it. Okay, change everything because obviously we can do it. So let's do it, I guess. We can do that. Why? The way that people talk, like as if it's like this, just, oh, it's just a fact of life. Let's open up donations. Let's do it. You know, I don't know who we're donating to, but you know what? If this woman, you know what? I nominate myself. <laughs> I nominate myself as the person to change society. I don't know how long it's going to take, potentially after I die, probably. Um, so I wouldn't mind if Queen Bestie right here, and you can just, I mean, this is going to cost money, obviously. I mean, this is not going to be cheap. So let's start with you. Go ahead. Anytime you get any money at all, don't even have, I'm going to link you my bank account information, okay? Anytime money goes into your account, it'll just shuffle into my account. You don't need that personally, obviously, because we're trying to make changes here. And I mean, what more do we need to do other than like, what is the biggest change we can make like for philanthropy, obviously. So donate all your money to me. I love that shit. I don't know what it's going to go to. Um, I mean, obviously making changes to the world, but like I said, like, I mean, I'm going to need to eat obviously. And I think I might buy a Lego set or two. So I'll take that. And, uh, that will help me like that will jog me up. You know what I'm saying? It'll like really vitalize me to make the proper decisions. But anyway, yeah, go ahead and donate all that money to me because obviously you want to make changes, right? Then like, I'm the best person for that. Right. So yeah. Anyway. These are things we've created. Yeah. Yeah. Being fat is I, I love that like this too like uh oh yeah like we can fucking totally do this shit as if like anything that she said was even anywhere close to being in reality it's i love it dude i love when people just say shit and expect people to go oh you just said something so profound you want the entire world to change for you because you physically cannot sit in a, a plane seat and you think that the clothes that you buy because your body size is so unrealistic is just unacceptable you're to oh my god you're saying something so oh, you know my four-year-old my four-year-old little cousin said the same thing actually he said that he wants he said he wants to eat fruit roll-ups every single night and he wants to fly uh, I think that's actually more realistic than what you were saying, matter of fact. I, you know, I, I don't know what. You see what I'm saying? It's like, it's, what are you talking about? No, it's not. These are things we've created. Being fat is actually very cool because True. you get to find out who people are very, very quickly. You find out if people are assholes and horrible people. I actually think that this could be a benefit, but I think most people are lying to you when they're around you, right? Like if people don't want to be mean and most people are being hyper aware, a lot of people do have those social standards and they will tell you a lie if they think it's going to be more appropriate in that scenario. So if you're fat and you think that this person's being nice to you, most likely they're lying to you. Most likely they're just going, they're going through the motions so they don't have to talk to you ever again because it's really uncomfortable to be around somebody that smells like straight up like deep fried grapes. So anyway. Very quickly and very easily. No more are there moments of like, oh, I didn't know they were weird. I didn't know like they were mean. I didn't know they were going to like be so judgy. We know immediately. Why? Immediately we know. How? Sure, there are outliers who obviously slip through and all that, but fat phobia is such a hard thing to unlearn for so many people. Yeah, because it's almost kind of like <laughs> being fat is not good. And most people, when they see somebody that's fat, which we intrinsically know that being fat is not good. And we're not even living in an era where you need to be fat. Like it was like maybe 100, 200 years ago or before that. We live in an era nowadays where food is pretty, like it's all over the place, like literally. And it's relatively cheap. And it seems like when you eat a lot of food, you get fat, which is unhealthy. And a lot of people just don't want to be around somebody that's unhealthy because it's kind of uh, sad. And it's also kind of uncomfortable. So 
especially the bigger you get. Like, I'm okay with being around people that are like, you know, 250, you know, especially if I'm around a lot of guys, because those guys are usually bigger men. But even then, it's like still a little bit uncomfortable because they have a hard time walking upstairs and stuff. But it's it's just not something a lot of people want to tolerate. So I get what you're saying, but it doesn't make sense. Even if they've unlearned other things, that it really shows you the amount of work that people have put into being compassionate like don't expect people to just be compassionate because you think people should be compassionate that's kind of dumb like you have unrealistic expectations like do you even have those expectations for yourself probably not so i don't even think this person even believes that and by the way like if i say oh yeah i think that being overweight is not good or i think that if you're too fat to fit in one seat i think you should buy two seats that's not being fat phobic. Like, do you honestly think that when you go to the doctor's office and your doctor reads off your blood work and goes, yeah, you're like dying and it's uh, not healthy at all. Like all of this is, this is bad. Like this is really not good at all. Like I think that probably we need to change some stuff up. Do you think that guy is just being mean? Do you think he's just like, he just went to medical school for like 10 years just to come into the room for you and just be mean? No, you're not that special. I don't know why these people think they're the main characters, dude. Nobody, nobody thinks like that. Most people are going to keep it a buck with you, and that's what you should hope for. So, anyway. Respectful, informed human being. Most people are respectful, and especially if they're telling you, yeah, boig. That's very respectful. I'm just identifying something that I saw on you, and it seemed pretty boig. And it shows you right off the bat who is worth your time because people don't respect fat people enough to pretend with them. Well, I think that it's probably better that you don't pretend around me, given the fact that I want genuine human beings that are gonna communicate with me. Like, I don't want somebody to just be, I don't know, yes queening me consistently. So I guess like for Splotch Maker, it's totally fine to be yes queened and just be in a vacuum chamber where everybody- And they don't respect fat people enough to even give them the time of day in the first place. So you learn very, very quickly the type of person someone is because they treat you pretty immediately in most cases how they see you we're really reaching really far to find benefits of being fat i mean if this is a benefit to you cool i'm happy that you have something because uh to be honest dude the list of not so good stuff compared to the good stuff it seems pretty unequal and then not even to mention the good stuff which is literally, I know when people don't like me, is also not very good either, because that by definition is literally a bad thing. So, hey, I mean, sure, dude, I'm happy. I'm so happy that you, Splotch Maker, have something that you can now look at as a good thing about being fat. Pretty serious question to ask everybody. If you are fat, why? A few reasons, I'm so glad you asked. Number one, cheese. True. Number two, when I sit on a man, it is completely to my discretion whether I inflict pain or pleasure. Do I give you the ride of your life or do I simply shamu your ass for saying dumb shit? What are we talking about right now, dude? What? Is she talking about sexually assaulting that man? What are we talking about, dude? Hold on. Excuse me. What is the nature of this video again? Hold on. I have had sex with somebody that's fat and... I can tell you right now, it was a very uncomfortable experience. A wig came off. I didn't actually know that she wasn't wearing a wig. I was younger at the time. I didn't even know if I was having sex. There might have been a time in the middle of that that I was questioning whether or not this even was a vagina. It could have been anything. It could have been a wet banana peel. It could have been a splotch of skin. It could have actually been... Uh, a piece of chicken skin. I don't know, okay? It was unnatural. It felt good at the time, but afterwards, I swear to God, after I had sex with this woman, I sat at the end of my bed, and I was just like this. Literally, just like this. While she was there, while she was looking at me, while this was happening, and I know it was terrible for her to have to see that, but also, it was terrible for me as well. It was not a good experience, and I deeply regret it, but it's okay, because as it is right now, I've grown from that experience, at least not outwardly, uh, physically that is, but I've grown mentally, I think, hopefully, and uh, I don't think I'll do it again, personally. It's just not for me, and I'm sure she's a great person. I would never shit on any of my ex-people or whatever, so she's a great person. I hope she lost weight. I hope she's doing well in life. She smelled good. She smelled good. I don't know what this has anything to do with the guy asking the question, but let's see choices. Number three, I consider it my patriotic duty, my duty to the human race to be as unattractive to pasty faced fucks as possible. Jesus, dude, pasty faced fucks? Like literally yourself. You're literally white. What are you talking about? 
Uh, oh, we are actually we are actually fighting fire or fire with this one, huh? We're actually coming at that guy's physical appearance. Can we look real quick at that guy one more time? Hold on, let me just. Good looking man, nice bone structure in the face, nice chin, nice shoulder definition. You can tell he works out. Nice hair, really good hair, and ooh, damn, is this really the fight you want? Is this really the hill you want to die on? I think this was a bad course of action, dude. I personally think that, really, this is interesting. This is an interesting way to fight this battle. Fighting off looks is kind of crazy because I think that you're actually lower than him on the scale. I think that you're less than him. I think he's more attractive than you. And you coming at him in a physical way is crazy. But hey, go at go at to him. be as unattractive to pasty faced fucks as possible, so that your line has the least amount of probability of continuing. And number. <laughs> uh, okay, hey, uh, we're going really far with this one, dude. We're going really fucking far on this one, dude. She's actually saying that she's unattractive to him because she's doing it per purposefully so she doesn't have to reproduce or fat women in general don't have to reproduce with somebody that actually cares about their health okay I, it's it's such a it's such a curveball i wasn't expecting it to go this way but okay i see where you're going with this but it it kind of is a little bit weird that you're con comparing and contrasting looks when he's better looking than you and then also it, I don't know if, do you have a boyfriend? Do you have somebody that you're with right now? Because you are more unattractive and usually people that are more attractive get more attention. Is that, I, I, whatever, okay. Four, can't forget number four, uh, p potatoes. One of the things I read is- Beautiful, I mean, she really proved a point there, obviously. It's, that was the best. That was honestly the best. I mean, none of it made sense and she actually made herself look like a fool there, but hey, uh, good for you, dude. I'm, I mean, sure, yeah. It's like about like, you know, kind of building my little platforms is, the fact that the only advice we have for dealing with comments or awful DMs is that just ignore it. Just ignore it. Um, you know, be the bigger person, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just so fucking sick of it. Because why Why is being the bigger person put on such a fucking pedestal? You don't have to be the bigger person. I mean, you're always going to be the bigger person. But you don't have to be the metaphorical bigger person. You can always call out the comments if you want to and be like a Marissa Matthews who's literally picking at like sticks on the ground at this point that are just like trying to find some form of relevancy or whatever but uh you can call out the comments if you want to or you can call the people that are making videos on you you can totally do that but it almost kind of seems like you probably shouldn't because ignoring it probably be the best course of action for you because you don't have to engage with anything you can just keep making your dog shit terrible points to try to make it seem like you're you know like actually saying something of value when in reality you're not saying anything at all and it's actually all negative but you could totally do that, but I'm gonna let you know right now, it's not gonna work. Uh, you're like dumb. Like the points that you have are stupid and they're actually harmful, but you know what? Go ahead, I dare you. Go call out the comments, call call them out, call out me. Let's have a conversation, let's talk about it. Um, Why can't I defend myself? And like when I do defend myself, it's like, oh. I think the act of not defending yourself might actually be defending yourself if I'm gonna keep it a buck, dude. Because like if you don't engage with it, you might have a better course of action than you would have if you did engage with it because most of the shit you say is blasphemous. So it actually might be, you know, passively speaking here, the best course of action. Oh, well, um, you know, why do you care so much? That's like the other thing we throw at people. Why, why do you care so much? Why do you care? Like, well, I just don't think it's okay for people to say that stuff to anybody, let alone me. You know what I mean? Like that, that should be something we care about. Call it out. Call me out right now. Do it hard. Call me out hard. Tell me how much of a bad person I am. And then message me on Discord and or Instagram and or Twitter. And then discuss it with me so we can set up a time and a place where we could talk about it. That would be awesome. That would be, wow. That would really be sticking it to me. Like, oh, it would be so, you would win, obviously. I mean, it would be nothing but beneficial. I mean, don't go for the small fry. Don't go for the commenter. No, forget about that. Go, go. Talk to me, okay? So let's talk about that. Let's do that. That should be something we care about. Let's do it. Whether people talk to people like pieces of shit or not. Let's do it. I'm a piece of shit. Ah, so bad too. Do it. Talk, contact me. And you were told we have to rise above it. Or, um, 
you know, oh, don't give them, don't give them the attention that they want. I don't want to give them the attention they want, but I want to address his problematic behavior. Give me attention. I need it. I need all of it. Give me all, so much attention. I need all of it all over my face and lower back. Give it to me. Can we not do both? <laughs> I don't know. I just find it really, it's just such a passive way of dealing with anything. Yeah. You know, and like, beyond like, you know, stopping all my comments or whatever it might be, like, I don't know. I just feel like we should be calling it out more, and we should we should embolden people to defend themselves. I think that she should. Honestly speaking, I think that there would be nothing but benefit if she called out people and had a conversation, an actual conversation, maybe even a debate about her beliefs and why she believes what she believes with somebody that was well informed enough to have also a conversation with that person. Maybe perhaps somebody that's name starts with D and ends with uh, Vit. I don't know. I was just thinking about it. Maybe. I don't know who it could be, possibly. I have no idea. But it could possibly be somebody in that bracket. Anyway, uh, that's the end of the video, guys. Uh, if you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it very much. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. All those things I'd appreciate tremendously helps me grow in the algorithm. So if you could do any of that stuff, I would appreciate you tremendously. If you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in headphones. Somebody called me out the other day and said, you, why are you still using the 3.5 millimeter headphone jacks? Because I can and it works and they're like $10 and I've been using the same pair for like literally three years. Like if it ain't broke, I'm not going to buy more. Why would I buy more? I don't need to buy a more updated version these literally work better than most and i don't lose them i've never lost them so anyway uh you're a beautiful person by the way i love the color of your hair i love the way it's so swoopy i love the niceness of it and the way that you contour it the way you take care of it the way you take care of yourself is also really nice i like that too that's really desirable honestly speaking uh it's a good trait to have if somebody takes care of themselves and you take care of yourself quite well and i think that's delectable also your kneecaps are very lickable I am always trying to stop myself from licking your elbows and your kneecaps, but sometimes I can't stop myself and it's very difficult, but I do, uh, for you, for the benefit of you. So, uh, I mean, what can I say? Your elbows are very delectable. Your eyebrows are very delectable. I have to, some, maybe one day it's going to happen and it's going to be tragic, but it's going to have to happen. Regardless, uh, if you want to check out my social media. It'll be linked down below in the description. It's just my Instagram, Twitter, Discord. All that stuff will be linked down below. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 